So, welcome back to the channel. No, first of all, this is not a clickbait title. This is my genuine opinion. I do genuinely think that this is the only sort of old school MiG-29 that is indeed worth playing at ah, top tier SB okay. right now. And uh, the reason for that is not because of the actual like play in itself. It's more about the matchmaker and the team setups, right? Because this is obviously the Hungarian MiG-29, which of course means that it sits inside the Italian tech tree. Now, what's Altitude. special about Italy when it comes to sim is that Italy sort of can, can get grouped up on either side. Um, usually you have like set teams. I say this in like every one of my, almost every one of my videos. You know, America, Britain, Israel, stuff, yada yada, always get you know, mashed up on one side against Russia, China, Germany, and, and the likes. Um, and Italy is one of those nations that kind of just, you know, depending on what server you're in or whatever, it can kind of go on either side. And this means that this, as of now, is the only MiG-29 that you can actually play on the blue side, i.e. with America against the Russian team. Now, I'll tell you why this is so important for the MiG-29, is because the standard 29 suffers from three main issues. First of all being the fact that it's 12.0, which means in sim it constantly gets updated, and it also means it doesn't get any of the new super duper IRCCM missiles that they need a new jet to get. Second of all, it gets pretty lackluster situational awareness due to the fact that it basically gets the same avionics package as the flanker, i.e. it's a bit shit. And thirdly, it has a distinct lack of countermeasures. Now, the 12.0 BR is one thing, because obviously in sim, as we all know, 12.0 always gets up to 12.7, that's just the way that like, the BR compression is set right now. And the other problem that this thing has is the combination of lack of situational awareness and a distinct lack of countermeasures. And why this is like so important is because like when you fly uh, against the American team, for instance, against the blue side, you are constantly going to go up against aimline M's. Now aimline M's are especially annoying in sim because there are no markers or anything like that and it is a smokeless missile. This means that you cannot see it. You you sim I mean these things are basically invisible you see like a you know a few pixels uh, whenever they get like within i don't know 100 meters of you or something like that but obviously by that point it's kind of too late to, to do so anything about it and the suspended tracking irlccm is also a, a type of irlccm that really does demand quite a lot of countermeasure deployment or flare deployment by its opponent for it to like properly work right um and the fact that you only get 60 pops on this thing it really does kind of like mean that the MiG-29 does run out of steam quite fast when it comes to fighting, especially when you're fighting like multiple people, you're in furballs, um, when there's pre-flaring that gets involved and stuff like that. Your, your staying power in this thing really is governed by the amount of flares that you carry kind of in this plane rather than you know, your ordnance or your fuel load or anything. Now the problem that this sort of has is that the fact that with the lack of situational awareness that this plane has, it's a lot harder to sort of preempt these like tricky situations and, and, and actively make a decision to sort of stay out of them, right? Um, what I mean by this is like when you look at the RWR for instance, the RWR, even though the Russian SPO-15 RWR did get an upgrade last patch in the sense that it now tells you the signal strength of the target locking you, or in other words how far away it is, um, which can be quite helpful, however obviously if the, if the guy is still just pinging you and he's not actually hard locking you then it is just going to be the same as before and it doesn't give you any extra information apart from if it's a pulse doppler signal or like you know a, a pulse signal which none of the planes at this BR have anymore so. And the fact that the radar, while it is pretty decent whilst it, when it has a like a solid target track, actually getting that track can be a little bit taxing sometimes. It can take a little bit of time as well because the radar doesn't update very fast either. Um, and it just means that like it's, it's a lot harder to sort of identify these furballs, identify okay there's like three F-16s over there coming towards me at 15 miles. It can take a lot longer for you to sort of gather that information and obviously if there's three enemies coming towards you with aim and M's, um, you don't really want to fly in that area. You kind of want to avoid that but you know, like I said, because of the way that you you gather information in this thing, it just it just takes so much longer the whole process uh, compared to something like an F-16 or some you know like a Western aircraft like Mirage 2000, which does have this good modern digital RWR and generally speaking a, a more reliable radar as well. And it's it just sort of means that you when you when you fly these kind of aircraft, these Russian aircraft, you sort of. You, it's a lot easier to find yourself in these sort of unwinnable furball situations where it's just way too many enemies. You realize, ah, okay, I shouldn't have turned back, I shouldn't have made that turn, I should have just like fucking you know, flown through or whatever. Um, and it's it's a lot harder to sort of 
predict these these kind of things in these aircraft than it is in the western ones now the reason i'm going down this whole rabbit hole here for the, the intro of the video i mean i know we're about five minutes in but whatever uh, it's because i think it's really important to understand exactly why it's so much easier to fight the red team at 12.7 than it is the blue team like i said like i've made clear the last five minutes it's, it's the situ it's situational awareness and when you're in a plane that doesn't have the the best flight performance it's not it's not bad pl flight Lock. performance by any means but Lock. it's it's not as good as the f-16 and your missiles aren't as good the r-60 really doesn't it really ain't it anymore the, the r-27s of uh, uh, et's uh, er's by the way you don't get Lock. et's on this thing the r-27 er is, is an amazing missile but it can be like defeated so easily just by flying low and multi pathing and stuff um and when you're in a plane like that that is just very clearly the underdog to so many aircraft that you're going to be flying against and um, it becomes quite important that nobody really knows where you are if that makes sense um you really you kind of have to try and stack the odds in your favor right you have to sort of start to sneak around a little bit um use terrain as cover right flank people you have to get kind of like creative you actually have to sort of use your brain you can't just press click the button and get the kill like you can in the f-16 seal the gripping or anything like that um, and when your enemy doesn't have the amazing overpowered RWR that the Western aircraft do, y you're punished a lot less for actually using your radar, right? And it, it means, I mean, you'll, you'll see there's a couple clips even in this video that are going to be coming a little bit later where I'm like, I'm, I'm following people, I'm following someone with my radar on, I'm not locking them, I'm just pinging them. Um, and I'm within a couple miles of them and they just don't react, right? And there's... If, if it was like an F-16 or something that I that would be following, um, they'd obviously see M-29 really close to them on the RWR, right behind them, and then they'd obviously react to it. Like, even like a someone who's relatively new to the game would realise that that's a bad thing, right? But if it's just like a little bloop on the thing, it doesn't really, like, show you, <laughs> show you what's happening. Um, a lot of people that just don't really a lot of people just drown out the rwr sound as well they don't even react to it and and that fact alone is the main reason why when you do play against the red team you end up getting so many more like sort of sneaky kills right where uh, you just you fire a missile at someone who's just flying in a straight line has absolutely no clue that you're there you're or you're even that they're like i don't know like 10 o'clock position or something and they just don't see you because the radar is only you know it only has like a tiny little search zone or something and these are the kind of kills that these like sort of these these worse underdog planes kind of end up relying on a lot more because obviously they it's a lot harder for them to go toe to toe with something that's like two BRs above them. Now, does that mean that it's absolutely easy mode to play this thing against red side? No, absolutely not. You're gonna see this in this clip here. First of all, you can see I'm gonna find something on radar here and I'm gonna try and lock him up. But the radar says nope, and uh, by that point I, I, I try and put the nose there just to sort of try and get a second lock, but he ends up locking me and actually firing an R27 at me. So I decide, okay, it's not worth it, I, I need to break off here to save myself. I dive into the mountains, try and break line of sight. Now you'll notice that we're, we're quite high up here. We're at about 11,000 feet here. Once we go over the top of this mountain, we're going to be at about 15,000 feet. Now this is very, very high altitude. Um, you can see my true airspeed. It's about 100 knots faster than my actual indicated airspeed, which means that um, the plane is actually going quite fast, but it, the, the actual maneuvering capability is actually a lot lower, and this results in us getting a bunch of separation from this guy. In other words, we get too far away. He ends up firing off on R-73. I could have fled a little bit more here, but uh, you know, that, would, that would have hit us anyway. Now, unfortunately, this is something that does tend to happen quite frequently up at high altitude when you're fighting someone that doesn't happen to be a single cell organism and is also in charge of a flanker armed with a bunch of R-73s. Now that was Afghanistan, which obviously takes place at quite a high altitude. This um, here, this match was on Dover Strait, which is a map that I generally try to avoid like the plague because it's kind of like Denmark, but just kind of worse in like every single way. Um, which is kind of weird because Denmark's already a pretty terrible map just because it's flat and there's just like zero terrain going on. It's kind of like Sinai and all these other, I mean, you've heard me bitch about this before. But anyway, it's kind of good in this case to sort of showcase what this thing's like down at sea level as well, which is, I guess, like kind of most maps um, sort of have this kind of altitude. And um, it's the truth is, it's not it's not that bad. It does suffer a little bit up at altitude against stuff like flankers or whatever. But down at sea level, you do actually stand quite a decent chance against most aircraft, um, yeah. even Grippins if they're sort of flown by people that don't really know what they're doing. 
As you can see here, this uh, Gripen here was actually fighting my friend here at the time, and I decided to sort of you know, come helping out. I didn't have any missiles left, so I switched to HUD mode, which is I think the name of the button bind that you need for the MiG-29. Got a ra uh, radar lock, and it gives you this like little lead indicator here as well. But you do have to switch to HUD mode for it, and it kind of it's, it can be a bit finicky sometimes the radar because it just kind of like flickered there a little bit. I'm not sure. It's been happening quite a lot since the last update, and I'm not sure what's causing it, but. Um, anyway, it allows me to get the gunshot pretty easily there, and I decide to run away back to base. Now, when you're using your radar missiles and you are firing them at the bad guys, you kind of want to make sure that you fire them off from as high of an angle as possible. You really want the missile to come down onto your opponent rather than just sort of like on the same plane. Um, not necessarily for like range purposes or anything, but if they are doing this thing where they're multi-pathing, you know, they're flying low to the ground trying to avoid the, the radar block or whatever, spoof the missile, it does kind of just, I, I, I can't explain it, I don't have like proof of this or anything, but it, it, I swear to god, it feels like the missiles are just, like multi-pathing is less effective against missiles that are coming in from a high altitude or like a high angle, I should say, like a steep angle. But anyway, we uh, we end up getting locked up by a target in front of us and I decided to abuse the multi-pathing here as well, just so that we spoof his R-27 there. Actually, that might have been an R-73, looking at the footage here. Um, I do get an R-60 lock here and he wasn't even pre-flaring, but unfortunately I blacked out and it wouldn't let me fire the missile, which is very, very annoying there, because like, I'm pretty confident I couldn't have gotten the I could have gotten the kill there. Um, the blacking out is something that does happen quite frequently, or it's very easy to do on the MiG-29, just because it, it's, uh, it doesn't have that G-limiter that the F-16 does, or the, the AOA limiter or whatever it is on that plane. So at those like kind of higher speeds, those like 500 knots or whatever, this thing does pull a lot more than the F-16 does. And uh, it just means, you know, if you're not paying attention, it's so much easier to black out on this thing. Um, so if you do want to sort of spend the silver lines, get the, the G suit, get the expert crew mod or whatever for this, then, you know, be my guest. But it's just, you know, if you're a plane that isn't really that effective to begin with, and obviously if you if you have the Italian tech tree, there's a lot more effective planes at this kind of BR, like the F-16 ADF, um, and later on the Grip and EBS as well. But anyway, we measure with a flanker here, obviously, and I don't think he was the best pilot in the world, but he did give it a good shot here. He gave me a pretty good fight, so uh, props for that. Um, I think he just he lost a little bit too much speed here, and I just kind of kept just enough to sort of maneuver my way uh, behind him here. Obviously, I switched to sight mode again to get the little gun sight lead indicator there, get the radar lock, which is easy as that, really. He just ended up sort of stalling out in front of me. Now he's got smoke on, which kind of makes me a little bit sort of paranoid, so I start pre-flaring a little bit. I do see something pass me over there, and it turns out it was actually a gripper. Now I'm at quite low speed here, 300 knots, which isn't ideal. By the way, my speed control in this video is absolutely atrocious, and I do apologise for that. Obviously, you're always going to want to be at around 400 knots. 830-ish kilometers an hour for optimum turning speed. You also don't end up blacking out as much for those kind of speeds as well. But man, I was just lazy when I was recording these clips here. So, um, and you know what? I don't even care. <laughs> but I do end up getting to this, like little roller here with the grip. And now the fact he let me bait him into a rolling scissors did kind of fill me with a little bit of confidence here, because usually, obviously, the grip and had a huge advantage at that point. I was very slow. And just when I get the nose round, I'm about to pull the trigger. I end up getting the team killed by a friend here, 14. I mean, props to the guy. I don't think he could have timed that, like, really any more perfectly than he did there. So, uh, you know, well done, mate. Well done. Uh, this does kind of remind me, though, that you know, team killing is something that you are going to sort of have to deal with in this plane. Obviously, you are flying a red side plane on the blue side. Uh, you can be following, you know, friendly F-16s or whatever with your radar on, and all that that's going to happen is they're going to see M-29 right behind them, and they're going to turn around and not even check their radar or just ACM mode you or whatever, and just end up shooting you, um, just like that. So it, you do need to sort of be wary of that. Maybe if you are behind a bunch of friendlies or in a cap zone with a bunch of friendlies, just call out your position a little bit more. Maybe keep your radar off or something like that, right? Just not to to spook any of your teammates, um, because eventually it will happen. You will get team killed. And it's not always necessarily your teammate's fault for team killing you as well, right? Because obviously you do look exactly like the enemy, right? Anyway, a Gripin has pulled into my 6 o'clock here again, and I'm currently flaring. I'm not trying to spam the flares too much, because obviously I don't get too many of them. Um, but I'm trying to sort of get him to overshoot here. I've got the air brake on, I've reduced the throttle. Uh, it actually ends up working. I've maintained a little bit of speed because obviously if you get them to overshoot and you're just basically at stall speed, it's not really going to do much at that point either because then they could reposition very easily. 
Um, I try and use the helmet mounted sight to get an R60 shot, maybe, but it, obviously the R60 is not an R73. It also doesn't get the huge ball sight. Just managed to roll out of his guns there. Now, this was a bit of a tricky fight, because not only did he start in the advantageous position, is I'm also quite heavy on fuel here as well, because I'd just taken off previously. So, this was this was really tough to sort of make the... I was really making a MiG-29 work here, and I think it, it, it did end up working quite well there. Roll out of his guns again. I'm just slowly getting him to overshoot, but obviously he actually ends up getting team killed there. I'm in the absolute worst position to defend from his missile, so uh, I end up eating the uh, the R73. There's nothing really I could do about that, but that's just the nature of top tier. You just that, that's why you should actually kind of try and avoid dogfights where you can, because you are just going to get third party. And with the way the IRCCM works with the missiles now, um, it is just. It's way too difficult to bend from multiple missiles coming from multiple angles with the uh, you know, limited flares or whatever. And when the only missiles that you have yourself are missiles that can get flared incredibly easily and aren't necessarily as maneuverable or you know as reliable in general as the other missiles um, that you would get at this kind of battle rating, then it can kind of you know, it means that you can kind of get stuck in these fights for a lot longer than you usually would do. So, in short, I'd recommend just stick to your R27 e ERs if you can. Um, if you're on one of these like flat maps where everyone's just kind of multi-pathing, then just you know do quick boom and zoom attacks and just hope that nobody really follows you. Um, but yeah. By the way, look how many like R60 shots they actually took to kill the Gripper here. We're basically we're, we're fairly close to him, but all he's doing is flying in a straight line, and every now and then he's deploying a flare, and it takes the, the, the three R60s to get him there. Um, yeah, that's just kind of like what I'm talking about. The R60 really ain't it anymore, uh, especially not at this battle rating and. Um, now I'm not going to bother showing my score or my earnings or whatever at the end of that clip because I was only in the game for like 20 minutes or something so there's no point. But I do like ending my videos like this in the sort of hangar where I just sort of like have my final thoughts. And my final thoughts on this thing are, um, is it worth <laughs> grinding out the entire tech tree? Obviously no, I don't think it is. I don't think it's that good. However, it is definitely worth a look on your way to something like the Gripen, for instance. Um, or if you just, you know, if like the 29 is like your favorite aircraft or something like that, and you just want one, or you don't like the, or you don't particularly like the SMT, then I think this is definitely worth a look as well, just because you get to play against opponents that won't just, you know, aim line MU from half the map away or whatever. Um, it's a bit of an exaggeration, but yeah. If you guys want to join a sim orientated Discord server, my one, as always, is linked in the description. We're almost, uh, um, no, actually, I think we've hit 500 members now. So we're, it's a pretty active Discord. So if you're, if you're into that kind of thing, you're, you're more than welcome. But other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you in the next video. Cheers.